Hey everybody, Josh Air Vaynerd here at Halo RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I'm hanging out in one of our Eagle HT fifth wheels today, where you have the new optional 12 volt refrigerator. I was a big proponent of this. I'm really glad to see Jayco, among a ton of other brands, uh, start to offer this. I think Wildwood was really one of the very first ones to offer a 12 volt fridge just as a standard matter of happenstance. And one of the big questions that we get, like here in the Midwest, a lot of people are park campers. And I know that other areas of the country, uh, there's far more boondocking that goes on. So as a nationwide coast to coast dealer, one of the questions we get is, I boondock, how friendly is this for my boondocking lifestyle? Can I actually keep my fridge running or am I gonna end up with spoiled milk? So I got a hold of my friends at Furion, who are the largest volume supplier of 12 volt refrigerators in the industry. And I got some actual testing data from them. Now, first, I want to establish a few ground rules so you kind of understand what the uh, criteria were during this testing. Where the calculations include a solar panel, it's assuming a south-facing solar panel with a 10-degree angle tilt, unobstructed light, and during the summer solstice. Basically, in English, meaning maximum possible sunshine, perfect world scenario. It's got the fridge set to off-grid efficiency settings, which when you're in that mode, by the way, at 75 degrees ambient temperature, it only pulls about 2.4 amps per hour, which is crazy low. And at 90 degrees ambient temperature, obviously a more real world kind of statistic, you're only still pulling about 3.8 amps, still very, very low. And obviously you can kind of scale up and down from there. It's also assuming only the refrigerator load, meaning no lights, no fans, which obviously is not the most real world uh, kind of calculation, but they had to establish some kind of baseline because there's no way they can predict how much lights and fans and everything else and USB plugs everybody else is using. And during these tests, it is assuming that the ambient temperature is a steady 75 degrees. All right, so with that established, this also always assumes just a single battery. So it can only get better from here, single 75 amp hour battery. So with just one battery, no solar, no nothing, they had this fridge running for 32 hours. Okay, that's pretty good. If you need to make a pit stop overnight or you're making a long trip, that will be more than enough because obviously you could be using lights, fans, awnings, slides. You could be in and out of the fridge and you'll have plenty of battery reserve. And when you're driving, it's going to help keep that thing charged back up. Now, with just a simple 50 watt solar panel, they extended that time from 32 hours to 77 hours. Well, that's pretty much a weekend right there. And again, it's not really hard if you had to plug in the truck to get a little supplement juice here and there. Okay, you could do that. Now, here's the thing though. This is the one that I really was uh, impressed and encouraged by. Because in my mind, if you are going to be a true off-grid warrior, chances are you're rolling with at least two batteries. I know I would. And chances are you're rolling with at least a 100 watt solar panel. I think those are very realistic expectations. But with just a single battery and that same 100 watt solar panel, they got this thing to run for 17 days. Boom! <laughs> That's a lot. That is a lot of time. You know, two weeks. Now, understand that's that was just a scientific, just the fridge running. They weren't opening and closing it. They weren't running slides, awnings, fans, lights, every other thing. So, obviously, your real-world camp time uh, reserve on that battery would shrink down from there. But, again, I think if you're boondocking, if you're serious about this, you're going to be rolling with at least two batteries. I know I would. So with a 100 watt solar panel, which you don't even have to necessarily have on the roof, just a, a portable panel is, is all that takes. Those little side mount plugs, that's all it takes to give yourself, I mean, you, a, a serious amount of off-grid time. I think they totally qualify for off-grid friendly when you consider the fact that a true off-grid person is probably already taking those supplemental measures regardless. So they cool faster. Um, they, they operate down the road safely. There's no fire hazards, no fire concerns. They're the best of like all of the worlds all kind of smashed into one. I'm a big fan of them and I think that you're going to see them pretty much, well there already are in, in anything short of like a giant full-time fifth wheel, they already are pretty much the dominant thing available out there now. And I think it's only going to become more so. So it's also important to remember, this is another thing, they're an active 12 volt compressor fridge. They're not a passive fridge. Like I've heard people say, I had an old 12 volt fridge in my pop-up and it, it could barely even keep the pop chilled, let alone, you know, keep ice or ice cream. Okay. When you're in those little campers like that, that's still a passive fridge and 12 volt doesn't provide enough juice to, it'll chill stuff, but it won't really get a cold, cold. This is an active compressor fridge. And if you don't understand what that means, let's forget the whole refrigerator thing for a moment 
And let's talk about something like uh, belly heating in an RV that we already pretty much understand. So um, passive cooling is kind of like radiant heat. So imagine you just have a hot object sitting in the middle of this room and it just slowly spills heat into the room. It will eventually get there. It will eventually heat the room, but it will do so more slowly. Actually, technically more efficiently, but more slowly. Efficiency and speed are not necessarily the same thing. Now, forget that, and imagine you have forced air heat ducting pumping the hot air into the room. Well, that will naturally heat the room more quickly. Think of that when you're talking about this. This is an active compressor cooler. It's effectively actively cooling everything much, much faster. It will cool at least four times faster according to Jayco's studies. So these things work like a charm. You know, if you're just gonna make a quick pit stop, you don't need to really mess with anything. They're gonna work fine. Um, things like all of the Cherokee campers, basically, that we have at Halo RV have that optional 50-watt uh, solar juice pack with a little charge controller, which is, again, enough for a good weekend, especially if you add a second battery. And on those Cherokees, by the way, you can add a second 50-watt solar panel and not have to monkey with any other equipment, and there you go. Now you have two batteries and you have the 100-watt capacity to get you a long weekend. It works. It's easy. It's awesome. It's very scalable to real-world scenarios. And then there's a lot of things uh, like these Jacobs. They have side mount roof prep, uh, solar or side mount solar prep, roof mount solar prep, side mount roof prep. That's your Uncle Josh, the RV nerd. <laughs> you get the point. Anyway, I've gone on this longer than I meant to, but I'm really pumped about these things. I'm very excited. I think that these are pound for pound the best option out there. I understand that for some specific users, they may not be the perfect fit for your style of camping. But I think for most everybody, this is one of the best ways to go. And if you need more information on that, if you're curious about what kind of campers we have that offer these 12 volt fridges, give our team here at Halo RV a call. Uh, let us know the style of camping you're looking to do, and we can help give you some suggestions based on uh, you know your specific camping needs. So, of course, as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. And if you appreciate the actual data information, things like this that we get to put out every now and then, make sure you follow our channel, guys, because we have stuff coming out like this regularly, and I just don't see a lot of it out there. We try to keep you in the know so you know which way to go with your RV purchase. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.